Let's take a closer look at Lightroom's point color tool. As always, feel free to follow along this tutorial by downloading the RAW file from the link in the description of the video. And now, let's begin. Of course, we will be doing some basic RAW adjustments first, so if you're just here for the tutorial part of the video, make sure to check the chapters below to quickly navigate to that part. For the basic adjustments, let's expand the basic panel. I'm going to change the profile to Adobe Landscape, which will bring up the base saturation, and I want this shot to be vibrant, so that's perfect for this purpose. The whole shot is a little bit too dark, so I'm going to bring up the exposure right around here. Looks pretty good. Of course, the highlights are too bright at this point, so we simply have to dial them down to balance things a little more. All right, looking much better. I'm also going to bring up the shadows so we get back some more details from these darker areas of the image. And while we're at it, let's also bring up the blacks. Okay, nice. I do think I want to introduce a little bit of contrast and I'm going to use the whites for that. I'm going to slightly raise them like this. Beautiful. I also want this shot to look clear and sharp. I'm going to bring up the texture for a little more sharpness. Then we're using the clarity to boost the midtones contrast. And I'm also going to add a bit of dehaze for some more extra contrast. Nice. And then let's also bring up the vibrance and that's it for the basic adjustments. We can take a look at before real quick, you can see the colors do look much better. We do have a lot more details in the shadows and in the highlights of this image. And all in all, it just looks much cleaner. Next up, let's check out the point color tool. You can find this tool in the color mixer panel right here. Next to color mixer, we do have the point color tool. So let's click on it. Right away, you can see there is not much going on. That's because we first have to select the color on which you want to work on. So make sure to click on that eyedropper. Then we want to go hover over the image and we want to choose the color we want to adjust. So let's say I want to make those green tones in the center a little bit brighter. Let me pick a green tone from right here. What this will do is it will create a new swatch right here. And with this color tone, we can now change the hue, the saturation and the luminance. We can do that through these windows at the top or we can use these sliders below. I want the highlights in the landscape to be brighter. I'm going to use the luminance slider for that and I'm going to bring up the luminance. You will see this will nicely make these color tones brighter. We can also use the saturation slider giving this area some more saturation without affecting the darker green tones at the bottom of the image. And of course, we can also shift the hue. So we can either make them warmer by bringing the hue slider to the left, or we can make the green tones more intense by bringing it to the right, shifting it more into a colder cyan color range. For this color swatch, I don't like to shift the hue, so let's reset that. What we have as well is a range slider. Let me click on visualize range so we can actually see the color range. If I pull up the color range, we will select more of these green tones around it. You can also see the color range changing in the panels above these sliders. If I turn down the range, we will narrow down the selection. But there is even more to it. If we click on that arrow, we get different tools to further refine the range. We get a hue range, a saturation range and a luminance range, which will be really, really helpful in a moment. Let me demonstrate this on a different color tone. I'm going to click on the eyedropper once more. I want to make the sky more contrast rich and intense. So I'm going to select a very dark blue tone from right around here. This will create a new color swatch to make the sky darker. I'm going to shift the luminance and I'm going to bring it down a little bit, introducing some more contrast. The problem with these blue tones against these brighter green tones of the landscape is we will create some very visible halo around finer details like around these trees. So as we bring down the luminance, you will see a very visible halo. That's a problem, but using the range settings, we can fix that. So I'm going to use the luminance range and I'm going to filter out the brighter blue tones of the image, which mainly lie around those trees because the sky is just brighter right here. If this isn't enough, I can further filter out the brighter tones by cutting down the upper fall off. I can click on that arrow and just carefully bring it down. We don't want to bring it down too much because then we get a very ugly edge, as you can see right here. So be very careful with that slide. We just want to filter out these halos around the trees. So right around here, that looks pretty good. What we can do with the luminance range as well is we can bring down at this point right here and 
by expanding that range, we are going to select more of the deeper blue tones right here in the foreground, which will give us a little more contrast. I do think the blue tones are a little bit too dark at this point, so I want to bring back the luminance here because I will be stacking a few masks later on on top. So we don't need to overdo it with one simple color swatch through the point color tool. But I do want to slightly shift the hue of the blue tones, giving them more of a aqua color tone like this. That's looking pretty good. Now, what else can we do? I do want to make these orange things right here in the foreground a little bit brighter. So I'm grabbing the eyedropper tool and click right in here to select that color tone. And then again, I'm going to click on visualize range and I want to dial it down a bit. So mainly the foreground is selected right here. And then let's bring up the luminance a bit and let's also bring up the saturation. I think that looks pretty good. Okay. And that's basically how the point color tool works. Now, the great thing is we just worked on the point color. If you go back to the color mixer, you can see all these sliders didn't change. So we can stack these settings on top of each other. What this means is I can now go into the hue panel and I think the blue tones still need a little bit of work. So I'm going to use the blue hue and I'm going to bring it down, giving the sky a more intense aqua color tone. Beautiful. We can also go into the saturation tab, of course, and further adjust the saturation here. That means I want to bring down the yellow saturation just a little bit, just to not overdo it with the landscape in the center. And instead, I want to bring up the orange tones because I want the building to be a little more saturated right here. So it's kind of more eye catching. And I'm also going to slightly bump up the green tones. And just like that, you can very precisely adjust colors using color mixer and point color tool. So let me deactivate the color mixer for a moment. That's what we have started with after the basic adjustment. And that's the image with the color mixer applied. But that's not all. We can also use the point color tool in combination with masking. So let's go ahead, open up the masking panel. And as I said, I want to stack a few masks on top of the sky to make it look a bit more dramatic. That means I'm using a linear gradient. Let's make it look like this. I just want to make the top part darker. Down below in the panel menu, you will see point color. So let's expand it. And again, we do have this eyedropper here. So click on it and I'm going to click right in here. And again, we can now shift the hue, the saturation and the luminance through this point color tool. So I'm going to bring down the luminance to make the sky a little bit darker. That's looking really, really good. Of course, we could also use a simple color range mask for the same effect. But if you want to have ultra precise adjustments, the point color tool might be a better option in the masking panel right here. So what I'm going to do next is to use another linear gradient stacked on top. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. So the very top part is the darkest part. And again, I'm using the point color tool, pick the eyedropper, click right in here, and I'm going to further shift down the luminance range. So we are getting a nice natural looking gradient from bright to dark in the sky. Let me give you another example. I'm going to use a radial gradient with which I'm covering the trees on the left side like this. Now I want these yellow highlights to be a little bit brighter. So I'm going to pick the point color tool, choose a yellow color tone from right here. And in here, I'm going to bring up the luminance a bit, maybe shift the hue, making those green tones look a bit warmer. And just like that, we have added some nice highlights to the image. Looking pretty good. All right, and that's how we can use the point color tool through masking. Now that's it for the tutorial part, but of course we're not finished yet editing this image. What I'm going to do next is to create a simple sky mask. I want to give this guy some more punch. So I'm using this mask. Let's go out of the point color tool. And I'm going to bring up the clarity just to make the clouds pop a bit. I also think I want to bring up the whites. Okay, then one more thing I want to do. I want to specifically work on the water. Therefore, I'm using the new landscape mask and I'm choosing the water right here. Click on it and click create mask. I want to give the reflection some more punch. So I'm going to bring down the shadows. I'm also going to bring up the contrast and I want to bring up the whites and some clarity and some texture. All right, and that's it for the masking adjustments. Let me turn off all the masks to see the difference from before to after. Beautiful. There's not much left to do. All I want to do now is to go to the calibration tab. I just want to slightly shift the blue brown hue down a little because I like what this does to the colors of the image. Then let's go into the details panel. 
for the sharpening. I'm going to bring down the radius, increase the details, hold down the Alt key while we're applying some masking, and then let's increase the sharpening. Done. So that's it for this Lightroom tutorial. Let me know what you think of the point color tool. Have you already used it? What's your experience with it? I'm looking forward to reading your comments and thank you so much for watching this video.